I'm Chris Roebuck and I have been a hands-on leader for over 30 years in the military, business sectors and the public sector. And 20 of that has been responsible for the development of senior leaders to improve their performance so their organizations are successful. It's that simple. And what I do, I now take all of that insight and I work with leaders across the world in organizations of all sorts to enable them to do exactly exactly that, using their own experience with some of my insights and experience to be more successful. Organizations have got what I would describe as internal challenges and external challenges. Uh, fundamentally, the external are the ones that we all see around us. So climate change is getting worse. Uh, we have economic instability that is driven by both climate change, but also by conflict as well. So that's the sort of external environment. Also, that then impacts organizations through their customers. We as customers are becoming more demanding. So I recently spoke at a global DIY summit uh, to about 1500 leaders of that industry. And they said, one of their key challenges is that we are customers are now asking for omni-channel management of our purchases. That requires more expectations. So customer expectations are going up. But as customer expectations are going up, also employees' expectations are going up of what they want from their leaders and their organizations. The problem is that organizations are not as effective as they could be at giving their leaders the capability to be successful. And all of that combined leads to uncertainty. The world is not full of employees, it's actually full of humans. And the reality is that we as human beings, our experiences create our perceptions and our perceptions determine our behavior. The greatest change that all of us have seen, you, me, everybody, is COVID. And our experiences of COVID showed that life could be short. And as a result of that, what has happened is we, you listening and everybody else, we have changed what we want from work, the prioritization of work over the rest of our lives and what we expect from our leaders. That caused the great resignation. And what were the drivers of the Great Resignation? The drivers of the Great Resignation were fundamentally, my boss doesn't care about me, my organization doesn't seem to care about me, I've got much too much work, I have no flexibility within my work, and actually there's no prospect of growth or development at this place, so to be blunt, I'm off. Now, those were always the reasons that people left organizations, but now, the benchmark is lower. More people are prepared to leave faster. The evidence is that 70% of people are now prepared to walk out without a job to go to. And for Gen Z, it's even worse because they are even more sensitive to those key things. They are 20% of the workforce now, and they'll be 40% by 2030. But the great resignation isn't over because economic conditions have now meant that some people are saying, oh, hang on, I can't leave. So what I need to do is I need to stay until the moment is right to leave. But in the meantime, I'm gonna minimize my effort. That is quiet quitting. And that is another challenge to our organizations. So we have a time bomb of leadership challenges and the way to beat them is just quite simply to improve our leadership. So we just need to make our leadership better. It is that simple. There's too much complexity in leadership. I'm an ex-military guy, and the way the military is successful is that it keeps leadership simple and focused. What organizations need to do, what leaders need to do, there's just three simple things. One, ensure that you have slick task delivery. Two, get the best from your people. And three, focus that best onto what delivers success, i.e. strategic objectives. 
Now, organizations know they should do that, but they're not doing it as well as they should be. Fundamentally, there are some really easy, simple things they can do that I show them that they can make that happen quite quickly. What is the, what's the difference? Well, if they do the simple things I suggest, those three steps, they can potentially get half a working day a week for their leaders, 30% more effort from 60% of people, reduce the risk of talent loss by 87%, and improve customer focus, risk management, high performance, and all of the things they need to improve just by a little bit of focus on improving how they do what they currently do. And doing those simple things could put them into the top 20% of leaders in the world performance-wise. The traditional way that leadership is presented is somebody says, this is the way to do leadership, do these things. I don't do that. What I do is I help Everybody in the audience understand that within their experience are the secrets of success for them themselves. And I work with the audience to bring those out through interaction. Now, as a result of that, what that means is that at the end of when I speak, everybody in the audience hasn't got a generic list of things they should do. They have a tailored list of things that they know they can do that is appropriate to their situation and a specific action to go and do. How do I make that happen? I build on the emotional resonance of the audience's personal experiences with their best boss. We interact, we have business examples, we have killer facts, and we build it all up to the point that there is this fundamental action plan at the end. It's interwoven with helping them understand that leadership is just as much about emotion, is rational, it is about rational thinking. It's that simple. And I help them understand that through introducing them to the power of neuroscience so they can understand how to get the brains of their people on their side. To give you an example of the power of those simple steps, when I spoke to the 1500 leaders of the DIY conference, the chief executive of the Kingfisher Group, a global FTSE 100, said to me afterwards, I really liked what you said, I found it interesting, I took notes, and I'm going to reflect on those to see what I can do. most important thing from my perspective is that the world out there is uncertain. It is changing. So every time I have an event, I talk to the audience both before and after the event and ask them from their perspective, what are their challenges? Where are those challenges coming from? So that's how I was able to identify this customer experience challenge that the DIY industry has. And through talking to the people in the audience, I then get an idea of how the challenges that organizations face are moving. In addition to that, I obviously develop my own understanding of areas that are critical to organizational success, such as the neuroscience enabling people to give their best. I also look at up and coming research. So for example, the annual uh, reports from Gallup about employee engagement and what employees are thinking across the world. So it's always looking at one, am I really current? Two, Am I really delivering the best for the audience? And three, am I answering the fundamental questions that those people in the audience have to enable them to be better? I think AI anxiety is to some degree like any anxiety that people have in organizations. It's about something unknown. And I've seen exactly the same when organizations say, hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do a change initiative, but we're not gonna tell you what it is until it starts. And everyone goes, oh, oh, oh no, this is, I don't like this uncertainty. The way around that is just quite simple. It's about transparency, open and honest discussion, building understanding and building trust. 
because if you build trust, then your people will start having certainty. And that is the fundamental challenge of any change. So as far as AI is concerned, there is no real answer that I can give for every organization everywhere, because AI is going to affect different organizations in different ways. But fundamentally, if you're a leader and your organization is thinking about AI, it is about those steps. Transparency, honest discussion, building understanding, and building trust, so people know what's going on. Okay, we have to accept, in this world, you cannot get rid of uncertainty, because uncertainty is how this world works, chaos. But at certain times, chaos comes together to create clarity. Now, in organizations, therefore, it's how do you deal with that uncertainty? But that links back to what I said before about people not knowing what's going on. The more certainty you can create within the organization, the happier people are going to feel, and then the better they can respond in an agile way to uncertainty that the organization faces. Now, my past was in the military. Fundamentally, that's what the military does. The military has to create certainty in absolutely uncertain and fast-moving conditions to deliver what needs to be done. And it's those three simple principles that I set out before, that if you can implement those, slick task delivery, getting the best from everybody, and focusing that on the strategic agenda by everybody understanding the big picture, people will then feel safer because they know what's going on. And my experience has been working with organizations to give them those three steps in the real world, that the response of employees is, when that happens, oh yes, I get it. I know what's going on. I feel better. What I'm doing is I am constantly learning and improving to do a better job. And I'll also be delving a bit more into digging a bit more into the neuroscience that I introduced because I find it fascinating because I know fundamentally if you and your organization can get your leaders to understand how this works, both their own and their people's, you're going to be more successful more often.